we have done our own fair share, Peter, of burning out here. Yeah, all, I know, I've seen that. All in the world, all in, 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 in enough chaps. It is not cheap or easy to, to, to train an athlete up to the superstar world championship level. And yes, we've had cases where athletes left here as stars, got, went away and did not make, make, make it to the next stage. It happens in life. There is a, they will tell you that of every single group of our class of athletes in any sport in the world if you track them from from juniors to professional less than three percent or four percent will yeah. actually sign a professional contract so we have done our own fair share peter of burning out here yeah all, i know i've seen that all in the world all in in, in enough champs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there were coaches and schools that champs and champs glory was the be all and end all of everything. So we were burning out athletes. One of the worst things for me to do, Peter, is young athletes trapped up going to run a race with like bandages everywhere. That that bothers me. You know, there's no reason why a class two athletes should run through some some injuries. All right. Say that, say that. I had this conversation this week. Every single decision that is taken whether to go away or stay here must be made on an individual basis there i have a program that i help athletes young athletes high school athletes to get into the ncaa system i've been doing that for a little while now and there are some who can stay here and do what they have to do many others will go away because they're also going to get a degree if you go to certain schools, Peter, a Texas or a Arkansas, a scholarship is worth sometimes up to seventy thousand U.S. dollars a year. Whoa! Do the maths. That is one. That's one fifty-five to one. Seventy thousand. You are not only going to get world-class coaching, but you're going to get world-class medical, medical, um, nutrition. You're you're in school. It's not the seventies where you could get somebody to write your papers for you. You must write your own papers now. You have to, so you are approaching college. And then remember no again, unless you're a Nati, unless you are one of you, your 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 sports career, which some people think is an oxymoron, because by the time you we're 35, we are we have retired or retiring. Yes, that's true. The, 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 the lifespan now, people are alive until they're 80 you now and older. So if you retire at 35, you probably have another 45 years to live. <laughs> what do you do if you don't make and only a handful, Peter, only a handful are going to be rich. A VCB and a Safa, a Bolt, a Shelley, an Elaine. A lot of the other athletes are going to have to find a job when they leave school. I, I bumped into um, Spearman in in um, Hungary last year. What is Spearman is a police officer. He's, he's I, got, I yeah. What what is Spearman is a police officer. He's working. He's he's working a beat. He's a police officer. A lot of the athletes are coaches or whatever, not because they they have to give back, but because they have to earn a living because sports don't have a pension. So do so, you think, do you think to interrupt? I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the reasons why a lot of the young, because what I'm noticing now, the trend now with the very young athletes like the Alanas, the, the, the Clayton Twins, etc., is that they, they forego college and they say, you know what? We're going to go straight to making that money, that paper. Do you think that's the reason? And do you think, do you think that's a feasible option? The same way you call me at times, I have people who I talk to. I talk yeah. to the Paul Francis's, I talk to the... Um, Wilson's from GC Foster, and I have friends, very good friends, who are agents who have been in business for years and decades. A Claude, a Claude um, Brian, for example, I call him. We talk a lot. Um, Norman Peart, Norman Peart, um, Anderson, their agents. And one thing they tell me is that 
when they sign young athletes, they build in a school, an academic proponent that they will be paid to go to school and pursue a degree because you're, yeah, it's all well and good for you to go pro if you can do it. I mean, a Bolt did not need to go to school, or a Johan Blake, uh, you know, did not need to, to go and get a degree. But when they make the millions, they're, they're going to have to find a way to, um, to, um, <laughs> they're going to have to find a way to, to, to make sure they, they can make the money stay and make more money for them. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not. I've, I've never been in a position to advise an athlete whether to turn pro or get a, a, a degree. However, um, if for me, there has to be an academic part of it. You, you have to go to school. You have to get some kind of education to fall back, and not just a high school education. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we had on Akira Nugent two weeks ago, right? I, mean, yes. I know you know Akira personally. And um, one of the things she said is she said her advice to the athletes is that she said, listen, if you go pro, get a degree. That was her advice. She, and she said basically the same thing you said almost verbatim. She said, look, by the age 30, 35, our career is over. So my advice is, you know, no matter how much money you're making, whatever, whatever, get a degree. It was, in, I mean, really interesting because this is a conversation that we have very, very often here as to whether or not, if you get what I'm saying, um, the athletes, because I think the impression that people have is that the athletes, like the, let's just use the Clayton Twins as an example. Yeah. Them just make up whack, like, you know, a million US, half million US, and that's it. But I, I'm pretty sure, do you have an idea? I mean, I know you don't know the details, but how are these sort of, um, scholarships are these deals normally um structured the deals i um i've seen a couple of contracts i've seen a shell you know there is a payment and i'm but it uh, most most contracts are heavily incentive laden so for example if you sign a million dollar contract over two years you probably cash value up front is probably three hundred thousand and the other you have to run fast, make personal best, make national teams. For example, most contracts are, 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 are into Olympic years. So this year, most people will end their contracts this year, Olympic year. And so they have to earn a contract. So it depends on you making your national team, for example, make it to the finals of the Olympics and winning a medal to max out your all the um, incentives on your deal. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's heavily incentive laden. Some people will, will make, I don't know, it depends on the athlete, but some athletes are, not all athletes are equal though. Right. Not all athletes are equal. So, and probably Elaine Thompson, her, her, her new deal that she signed to, to, with um, her new shoe company might be worth a little bit more than say um a young blake for example right right right, right. Mm -hmm. okay you, see, you you brought up one of the magical names one of the the three magical uh fairies the three magical queens right um we know that making the jamaican national team is it, it, it's got to be one of the toughest teams on earth to make. Yeah, I, I think maybe yeah, in, certain, in certain events, in the, in the sprint hurdles, in the in sprint the hurdles, in the sprints. Yeah. Yes, the jumps, it's difficult. Elaine Thompson Hera um, is the, she's the Olympic queen, you know, the double double champion. And um, last year she had a, a terrible year. It, it got really good towards the end. Yes, yes. Um, she, she picked up a great coach. And then we don't know what happened. I don't want. I don't want to get. I don't want to get myself into that. But we know that she's with um, Shelley's coach now. Yeah. Walcott. Yeah. Right. And, and the fact that she herself and Sharika and Shelley are so silent, like we're hearing nothing about them. It's February. It's February, Peter Lad. There's nothing right. to hear. It's February. <laughs> well, we remember we saw we saw Sharika doing the 60s last mm -hmm. year. And, and, and a lot of athletes will tell you that they don't.